shepherd he feeds his flock and gathers the lambs in his arms, holding them carefully close to his heart, leading them home. Say to the cities of Judah, prepare the way of the Lord. Go to the mountain top, lift your voice. Jerusalem, here is your God. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock and gathers the lambs in his arms. Holding them carefully close to his heart, leading them home. I myself will shepherd them, for others have led them astray. The lost I will rescue and heal their wounds, and pasture them, giving them rest. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock and gathers the lambs in his arms, holding them carefully close to his heart, leading them home. As we begin our liturgy, would you uh, please be, please kneel. As we begin, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us call to mind our sins as we prepare to celebrate the second Sunday of this Advent season. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy, have mercy. Loving God, we've come here this morning to begin the second week of Advent. As we notice our two lit candles of our Advent wreath, may we again be reminded of the shortage of time we all have to prepare our hearts and welcome to Christ our Savior. We ask for your prayer and guidance upon us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please then, everyone, be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the miter that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever, the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights. Look to the east and see your children gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you, borne aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground. 
that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forest and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's comments, at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is number 996. 996. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the exiles from Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our tongues songs of joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then the nations themselves said, What great deeds the Lord worked for them. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed we were glad. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Bring back our exiles, O Lord, as streams in the south. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. They go out, they go out full of tears, bearing seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back with a song, bearing their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of the Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We share now a reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Iteria and Trachonitis, and Licinius was tetrarch of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin, as is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Friends, the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, one day a, a fellow walked into uh, the doctor's office and the receptionist met him and said, what do you got? And the guy said, shingles. So she took his name and address and then said, you can have a seat in the waiting room and somebody will be in shortly. So 10 minutes later, nurse's aide came in and went up to him and said, what do you got? And he said, shingles. So she took his um, address and did some of the medical history and then said, well, just go into this doctor's office here and somebody will be in shortly. So 10 minutes later, a nurse walked in and said, what do you got? And he said, shingles. And so she took some blood work and did a little mock-up of some of his medical history and again said, now just, just wait here and the doctor will be in shortly. So 10 minutes later, the doctor walked in <clears throat> and said to him, what do you got? The guy said, shingles. And the doctor said, where? He said, in the truck outside. <laughs> where, where do you want him? So sometimes, you know, sometimes, a lot of times, we can't quite understand really what somebody's trying, trying to tell us, right? We don't get it, we get it confused. Here we are on the second Sunday of this Advent season, and who's the person that comes before us in the gospel? John the Baptist. John the Baptist must have been quite an important quite an amazing fellow. From what we hear of him, he was coming out of the desert and wearing the clothes of a camel's hair. And the gospel writers say, well, and what was he eating? A rugged man that he was, he was eating grasshoppers and wild honey from honeycombs that he would find. Can you imagine how many times John the Baptist must have been bit by bees? He was a rugged, rugged individual. Tough probably to even look at. But what was even more rugged was his cry to people, repent, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. People must have clearly understood, though, those words that he was sharing with them because they knew it was a call to repentance. The ability to recognize their own sinfulness and their need to ask for forgiveness. And apparently, many 
people who heard him came down to the Jordan River and they were baptized as they admitted and confessed their sins. Powerful story of a man who had power in the words that he shared with them. I often think, what would, what would it be like if those doors opened up in the back of church and John the Baptist <laughs> walked through the doors and came all the way up to the front here? What would our reaction be as he cries out, Repent! The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Some might whisper to the person next to them, call the police. <laughs> this, guy's, this guy's crazy. Maybe some of us, our reaction would be not to even listen to it, but to pretend to be deaf. Some of our reaction might be, sin, he's re asking us to repent? I don't have any sins. <laughs> I don't have to repent. But if he did come down and cried out like he did, I would presume, I hope some of us would say, you're right. You are so right. I am a sinner. I need, I need to repent of my sins. What do you think what would, your react, what would your reaction be if he came down the aisle here this morning? Well, as I said, people in, who heard the cry in John's days recognized they needed a Savior, and they acknowledged their sins. How about, how about you and me? I would presume, thankfully, Everybody who's here might not be guilty of serious sin, but I would, think, I would think every one of us who's here is a sinner. I would presume we're all sinners. In the end, we might not be guilty of serious sin, but, you know, you think about the sins of omission. Omission. We may not have killed anybody. But how many times have we responded to a need that was urgent around us? We might not have badmouthed somebody, ruined their reputation, but how many times did we fail to encourage someone or congratulate someone for an accomplishment that they did. You know, we might not have, as I said, killed anybody, but again, how many times would we have gotten a bag of groceries together and given it to somebody who was really hungry? hungry, Or a bag of clothes to somebody who was really, really poor? So, Thankfully, we may not have committed serious sins, but how many times have I been guilty of sins of omission? Omission. So, John the Baptist cries out, Repent! 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 Those words would be just as appropriate today as they would have been in his day. You think this world's a better place than it was 50 years ago? I would think a lot of us would say, I don't, no, not really. Do you think we're less sinful people today than they were 50 years ago? I would think most of us would say, hardly, hardly. We need, I need, we need to acknowledge our responsibility and our sinfulness. So, we do that as Catholics in a particular way by receiving the sacrament of reconciliation. The sacrament where we tell Jesus, I'm a sinner. <laughs> I sure hope you can forgive me. And here at Holy Family, a week from this coming Thursday, 
there will be a full day, a whole day, where priests would be available to receive, to offer the sacrament of reconciliation. The question is going to be, besides, do I need to be forgiven? Do I want? Do I want to be forgiven? So hopefully, we understand what repent means. We're not confused like the poor medical staff was when the guy said, shingles. Yeah, shingles. Well, <laughs> this is quite different. And we pray that the dear Lord would help us all to be free of the things that just bind us up, keep us from being open to his goodness and his love. Friends, let's stand then, please. And let's offer today the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand, God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's lift up to our loving God the needs in our hearts. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For the church, that it may continually work to make the winding roads straight and the rough ways smooth, so that we will all be able to see the salvation of God. For world leaders, that they may remove all obstacles on the path to justice and peace. For those who are estranged from their families, that they may forgive one another and be reconciled. For our parish community, that all members will grow in holiness as we wait for the Lord's return. For Crisanto Perez and Lorena Rodriguez, who were married last weekend, may God continue to work in their lives as they live out the sacrament of marriage. For all who have died, especially for Dolores Gruel, Silveria Krebsbach, Verna Walsh, Therese Dernetsky, Jerome Van Beagle, and Donald Kind, who died this past week, and especially for those remembered at this Mass, Al and Lydia Mand and Frank, Valeria John and Alan Kiefenheim. We pray. Hear our prayer. Father, we prepare for the celebration of Jesus coming among us. Help us, Lord, see the need for repentance and forgiveness. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Number 418 on Jordan's Bank. 418. Put it on the altar, okay? Out of one, right in the middle. <laughs> On Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. 
Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings of the King of Kings. Then cleansed be every life from sin, make straight the way for God within. And let each heart prepare a home where such a mighty guest may come. Now all you are, patient Lord, our refuge and our great reward. Without your grace we waste away like flowers that wither and decay. To heal the sick, stretch out your hand and bid the fallen sinner stand. Shine forth and let your light restore its own true loveliness once more. All praise to you, eternal Son, whose advent has our freedom won, whom with the Father we adore, and Holy Spirit Stand, everyone, <clears throat> pray. May our sacrifice be accepted by our Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Dear Lord, be pleased with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our own cause, come to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks then to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, it's always right. We should give thanks to you through your beloved Son. Jesus assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh. He fulfilled the plan that you formed Long ago, he opened for us the way to salvation. And so we watch for that day and hope the salvation promised will be ours when Christ comes in his glory. Now we lift our voices to you as together we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Father, you indeed are holy. You're the font of all holiness. So send your spirit upon our gifts. May they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before our Lord, entered into his suffering and death, we remember. At his last supper, Jesus took bread from the table. He thanked you, Father, then broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. 
For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, we also remember. Our Lord took the chalice, and after he thanked you, Father, gave it to his disciples and said to them, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. It's the blood of the new, eternal covenant, and will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. So do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Father, we celebrate then the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection. Now we offer to you the bread of life and this chalice of salvation. All of us thank you for letting us be here to minister to you. And humbly we pray receiving the body and blood of Christ, may all of us be brought together in greater unity by the Spirit. And we pray, Lord, for the church scattered throughout the whole world. Bring us together in charity with our Holy Father, Francis, and our own Bishop, Jerome. Remember, too, our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection Lord, bring them to the light of your face. And finally, have mercy on us here, that one day we will be together again, we celebrate eternal life with our Blessed Mother, Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, the Apostles, and all the saints. May we praise you together with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Friends, Let's lift up the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this, this day, day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. O Lord, from anything that's evil, deliver us. Protect us from anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O oh Lord, you promised peace to all of us here. Look not on our sins, but our faith. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. May our Lord's love and his peace be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Let's offer a sign of that to those who are near.
the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Friends, behold the Lamb of God, who takes all of our sins away. O oh, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 930, Taste and See, 930. Taste and see, test and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, test and see the goodness of the Lord, of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise shall always be on my lips. My soul shall glory in the Lord. For God has been so good to me. Friends, we have some announcements. Again, a special day here at Holy Family Church today. So at 4 o'clock, we have the live nativity story. The doors are going to open at 3.30, and uh, you have to have a ticket to attend. 
And we hope those who have tickets will come and enjoy uh, the excitement of it all. On the way into church this morning, I thought I saw a bat outside of the church, of course, but probably came early waiting to get in. <laughs> but uh, they're better. I, just kidding. I don't think anybody would show up if there's any bats that are a part of this nativity scene. But there's a lot of other funny animals, I'm told. This will be an exciting experience. So secondly, Holy Family is going to offer multiple Masses for the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, which is on Tuesday and, and Wednesday. For an updated list of those Masses, please check out the Good News or our website. Okay? And our calendars for next year are available out in the gathering space. We're inviting you to take one per family. Fourthly, members of the Knights of Columbus will have Keep Christ in Christmas yard signs available in the gathering space after Mass 2. I think they're hoping you might make a goodwill donation for one of those signs. And fifthly, Father Fabian is going to discuss John the Baptist, how like he, how he prepared for Jesus' coming. We do as well at 6.30 uh, tomorrow night, Monday, at Sacred Heart Church. So hopefully we'll see some of you there. And what? Lastly, your sign-up sheets are available in the gathering space for liturgical ministers to sign up to help us for our Christmas Masses on Christmas and New Year's. So I hope you'd consider signing up on one of those sheets that's there. All right? All right. Let's stand, everybody, please. And let's bow our heads as we pray. Boys. Dear Lord, strengthened by this heavenly food, we humbly ask that through our sharing in this mystery, you will teach us to judge wisely the things of this earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, the Lord is with you. And with your spirit. May he bless us through this second week of Advent. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, let's go to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 414. The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns. 414. shall come when morning dawns and light triumphant breaks when beauty gives the eastern hills and life to joy awakes not as of old a little child to suffer and to die but crowned with glory like the sun that lights the morning.